So uh, this is the title I was given uh, after four, I, uh, some of my formative experience, four years at McDonald's working four nights a week. I learned to do what I'm told. You told me to clean the lobby, I cleaned the lobby. So uh, they told me I was late at career. I, I disagree with that. I'm mid-career. My best years are ahead of me. Uh, but <laughs> they are. Uh, and that's the way I get up every morning. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you from a whatever uh, stage you want to put me in. I'm also editor-in-chief of MBIO and deputy editor of Journal of Clinical Investigation. So the, uh, there are going to be three take-home messages from my slides. You've got figure problems that are common in published papers. Most problems are due to error, no misconduct, and new procedures are emerging to reduce error. And the last thing is what I want you to focus on. Science is reforming itself in a blink of an eye. And, uh, and we need to give, uh, we need to, to celebrate some of the things that are going on and encourage them. So uh, this all began about eight years ago when Elizabeth Bick, who was then in David Rollman's lab, uh, contacted Farrick Fang and I, and I will tell you Farrick Fang has been my collaborator in all these papers, uh, and she said, you know, I'm seeing a lot of problems in figures. And uh, I contact journals and they don't listen to me. So I said to her, well, why don't we do this systematically? Why don't you just create some sort of dossiers and Farrick Fan and I have to agree to these things. So all three of us had to agree. And she went through 20,000 papers. I can tell you that she is a, she a full-time job and she's a mom. She found time to do it. And uh, often people who are very committed to improving things find the time uh, to do things. 39 journals, 13 publishers for about 10 years. And I'll show you some of the things she found. Now, I'm going to go fast because I just have got to get a feel for it. This is a facts plot. Is there a problem with this data? And you can see that uh, two of the panels are identical. The others are not. It's very difficult to imagine how that could be. Here is another example. This one is easier. You basically have two panels that are identical. This is almost certainly the uh, author just inserted the wrong, uh, the wrong uh, file. Uh, is there a lot of problems in that figure? You can stare at it for a while. By the way, you will get better in about three slides. <laughs> but you can see that those are the same. Those have been rotated 180 degrees. And these have also been rotated 180 degrees. Is there a problem with this figure? Those are the same. Is there a problem? I took this from our own journal, so that uh, equal opportunity is uh, <laughs> showing it. And you can see those are the same, those are the same, those are the same. So uh, the big study findings that the prevalence of images, uh, she found problematic images just by looking at the images in the literature. One out of 25 papers had a problem. The findings are an underestimate of problems because only photographic images were looked at. Uh, journals suffer uh, tremendously in problematic images, and this appears to be a 21st century phenomenon. She found not a single episode in 1996. Shortly after that, Photoshop becomes, uh, becomes apparent. So when we published this study, one of the criticisms was, hey, you guys didn't do this right. You needed to do it randomly, and you need to do systematically. And uh, we, I take criticism very seriously. So... Uh, Fortunately, you know, I'm an editor-in-chief on ASM Journal, and we're working with other journals, and we decided to do uh, the molecular and cellular biology study. So here, a single journal, she, Elizabeth Pick went through papers in a single journal. There was no choosing or anything, and what you find is she analyzed 960 papers. The, now, the number goes up by about 50% to 6.5 image, but the good news is that most of error are errors. The bad news is one in 10 leads to retraction. And I'm happy to see that one of my co-authors, Amy Collis, has just joined us in the audience, and she is the ethics editor for ASM, and she was key in contacting all these people and telling them, you have a problem in your figures, and then having all working with all those labs to figure out uh, what happened. Uh, more on the MCV study, uh, the enormous high cost of resources to correct a single problem. Uh, it allowed the first estimate of compromised numbers in the literature, 35,000. Now, you might say that's a big number. There are 28 million uh, uh, papers in PubMed. So probably the number that needs to, quote, unquote, be retracted, if you can extrapolate, is going to be relatively small. The good news is that increased screening at the journal reduced problems. And you can already see that there was a trend decreasing. So even as the study was being done, the system was beginning to correct itself. 
So uh, the Amoso de Bireiro at JCI, and we decided to carry out a similar study. And this was for accepted papers. So JCI also hired somebody who could look at the figures, and he's got that ability to see them. And now 28% of accepted papers have a problem. 28%, almost a third. JCI requires that they submit the original data. And when you investigate, you can see that 89% are minor tra transgressions, 7.5% uh, are moderate, 1% one, one had to rescind the acceptance. So the take home message is these things are highly disturbing. There are almost always some sort of error. Uh, occasionally, they are a major transgression. But if this is what is happening, what to do to uh, reduce it? So uh, we're in the midst of a revolution, uh, preprints, and they bring a uh, pre-publication review to the biomedical sciences. I'm using preprints. I find them extremely helpful. They allow us to get the message and to publicize it. And I'll show you an example from my own lab how the preprints have helped us avoid error. So you can see that paper was published in Nature Micro Reviews about four, uh, five years ago. And then we put a preprint um, then we put a preprint in. And somebody read the preprint and noted that you see the figure B at the end was the same as the, figure or the earlier figure. And that allowed us to immediately correct it. What had happened? Very simply, the original version of the paper that was eventually published five years later had been submitted. And when the first author made it, he assumed that that picture had already been published. So uh, it's an error. I can tell you that, um, I don't, I, you know, I'm not embarrassed to tell you that, that I, some of my collaborators have had problems with the figures, and, uh, and it takes an enormous amount of effort to, uh, to go back five, 10 years to try to know what happens. So and really what you want to do is you want to try to avoid it up front. Social media and shaming. Uh, this is an example. Elizabeth Big found this paper in Nature. This happened last month. Within a day, this gets all through social media. And other people piped in. They carry out their own analysis. And uh, this is a, an example of very rapid correction. On the other hand, uh, I show you, I'm not showing you the paper in part because I don't want to malign the authors. I mean, I, I think that unless these things are looked at, it is possible that you, you don't know what the intent is be, beforehand. So I, I want to end with emerging solutions to safeguard the literature. So I would tell you that uh, things are in flux, but they're in flux in the good direction. So pre-publication, the preprints are allowing this stuff to get out there. And people in the field can comment back on you, usually by email. It doesn't happen publicly. That's how it happened to us. Uh, increased education. Uh, these errors are now part of ethics courses. You tell people that this is easy to do. Please check your figures. We have a paper about to go out this week. It's got like nine figures, and I keep staring at them, uh, worried that there is going to be some sort of replica, uh, duplication on them. And I have asked other people in the lab to look at it. That would not have happened five years ago. Simply, I had no clue that these things uh, were happening. And you have uh, increased vigilance. At the review on the publication uh, level, uh, you have increased reviewer education. The reviewers are looking at these figures uh, differently. You have enhanced editorial scrutiny. Uh, the ASM is checking figures. The JCI is checking figures. The JCI is demanding that you deposit the original data with the paper. And that's in many ways that is caught. And, and that is a great thing because if you run a lab and you try to find work that was done a few years ago uh, with the changing in computers, the changing in programs and all that, you know it's going to take a lot more time to do that, to find it, even in a well-curated lab than if the journal basically had it up front. So post-publication, you have the pop peer effect, that papers are, are criticized and pop peer. You have social media shaming. Notice that I put a sad face. I don't necessarily agree with the town square uh, thing, but I do tell you that it is happening. And if it happens to, to any investigator, uh, you know, this is it's, it's, it's very unpleasant. Journal comments. Uh, retraction Watch has been a big force in exposing some of the problems in papers and digging on what goes on behind them. 
uh, and ultimately retractions. Retractions are rising rapidly and we need to look at that positively. I think scientists are beginning to realize that retracting a paper is not a career ending phenomenon, that this is in fact part of the process, that something is wrong, you got to take care of the literature. And, uh, and, and move on. And I, what I've seen is people retract papers, then do these studies all over again, and then quote unquote publish uh, the right stuff. So uh, I think that emerging so solutions are happening to uh, safeguard the literature. Uh, these obviously don't address uh, some of the things that were addressed by the prior speakers, which I think have to do with the culture of science. I think that hopefully we can do more discussions on the culture of science during the open uh, during the, the uh, discussion apart, because I think at the heart of this, is the, the central problem that we're facing is that as someone uh, pl uh, has, has uh, stated, the, the uh, norms of science are in sync with their uh, reward system. Uh, Brian alluded to that uh, very clearly. And uh, I will tell you that we're living in a time in which if you have a paper that is wrong in a single word journal that is not retracted, you have a better career than if you have a highly rigorous paper in a three word journal. And we can't tolerate that. We need to fix this. And the fix here has to be at the culture level. And I hope somebody asks uh, something about that so we can uh, talk more about it. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much.